Well, hello again. Uh, today's video is brought to you by no cups of coffee. I don't know, or tea. I don't know what, how I did that with recording a video. Uh, um, and uh, a very bright shirt that I just got yesterday off eBay. Look, I should have saved it for uh, 4th of July, really, with this colouring. But uh, I like it. It's kind of kind of cool. But yet again, I digress. This video is about uh, IBM i Access Client Solutions the uh, suite of Java tools that IBM provide to give connectivity to your IBM i system. Um, with this presentation, I'm just going to look specifically at the screen emulator. This is my preferred screen emulator of choice. It just works really well. It has some neat little features. So we'll just quickly look at how, what it looks like and look at some of the basic things like the colors on the screen, the fonts on the screen, uh, the multiple tabs, Perhaps we'll look at other things that we use that I use a lot, like screen history and snip recording and things like that. A couple of little just cool tools. So uh, I'm going to run. I have a shortcut on my desktop here. This is just a shortcut that runs to the um, ACS bundle jar file, which I have stored in my folder. Because uh, if you've watched any of the download videos I've done, you'll note that um, you don't need to install this as a product. You can do, but it's standalone. So literally, this is just a shortcut into a folder that I've got called IBM I Access 1.1. And I'm just running the ACS bundle jar file, all right? So if you just click on your ACS bundle.jar, it will launch, hopefully, I'll be my access client solutions. If it doesn't launch it, install Java or one of the free Java alternatives out there. This brings you straight up with the main access client solutions menu. From here, you can do all kinds of things from running SQL scripts, signing on. Uh, trans uh, playing with and configuring your uh, IFS, your integrated file system. Um, what used to be the navigator for I is now a link to a web service that runs on your IBM I system. So you have all the same tools you used to have in a Windows client, now through a, a web UI direct on the machine. And of course, you can look at your printer output and do things like take a spool file and convert it to a PDF so you can email it and all that kind of jazz. But we're just going to look at the 5250 emulator. So select your system name that you want to connect to. If you haven't got one, click on System Configurations and add one. I'm using Pub 400 for this case. So without further ado, let's start the emulator and see what happens. It opens your emulator straight up. Uh, once again, I will maximize. No. Uh, OK. I was going to maximize it. I'm not. I'm going to stretch it so we can see some of the font scaling. This is one of the things that I like about this version of client access. The font scaling tries to maintain the same uh, width and shape of the screens, and it fits it into whatever size that you want. So, for example, if I sort of drag this to a really, really wide screen, it won't change the fonts. It will just centralize this. 27 by 132 which is my preferred sign it always keeps that same scale regardless of what I'm doing with the, with the window size so I can drag my window size and it will fit things in if it will go or I can maximize and it will just give me the best shot you can change the scaling option so that it will always stretch it out to fit in the screen but I just like this kind of always knowing that's exactly what I'm looking at and of course I tend to run it in Windows format rather than main screen um, just because that's what I'm used to doing and I like to see other things in the background that I'm working on so I can flick between them easily. Okay, so let's sign on. This is completely vanilla. I haven't changed a single thing in here. The sign on screen at Pub 400 is just garishly colored. That's just how it is. Here's our main menu. Um, we can do anything we like. Uh, what have we? Let's do a work spool file. Okay, here's, here's the spool file screen. Now, we have hotspots that we can activate in um, uh, the 5250 emulator. So let's look at a few of the things that we can do in here. Um, obviously, that you have our main menu at the top. All of these menu options are also accessible through the icons. You can turn these on or off if you want to have the toolbar or not. I quite like it there because the two that I mainly use, um, I obviously control C, Control V, and all that stuff. I can I cut and paste using the shortcut keys, but sometimes it's nice and handy just to have the the paste button straight there. The data transfer option launches the data transfer facility. If you want to upload um, a spreadsheet direct into a file or download a file from the machine, a table if you're an SQL guy, direct into a spreadsheet on your machine, on your PC. Um, this is probably the best one. This is the IFS, the new 
integrated IFS uh, plugin tool, which lets you just browse the IFS and upload and download files. But I'll do a whole separate um, video in a second about the IFS and how that integrates because there seems to be a lot of confusion about it. I don't know why. It's such a simple thing. It's been around for 30 years, back when it was called the DLS, the Document Library System which was part of the old Office Vision DOS-based thing. People still use the DLS. It's now, it's now just like a it's a crappy dark corner of the IFS. See, look, you've sent me down the IFS rabbit hole now. I'll talk about that later. Um, we can do um, all the usual things up here. One of the use, useful ones is to set up display colors. I touched this on another one. Um, I'm probably going to leave this in green on black just so we can play with it. What I tend to do is I prefer to see a dark text on a white background. So I can quite easily go in here and change my background color. Um, if I wanted to go down and say screen background, I think I'll make this one uh, gray. I wouldn't do that because it's an awful color scheme. But uh, let's say dark turquoise, uh, equally awful. But it's quite nice if you've got a dev machine, a test machine, and a production machine, for example, because you can have all the tabs running at the top of the screen. And if you do a separate background color in each screen, you know immediately which one you're looking at. But wait, there's another function, rather than just changing background colors, um, I'm, I'm gonna cancel this and just stay exactly where we are. You also have, um, a different way of showing your backgrounds, which is to have a graphic on the background of your system. So when you do the connection to your system, you could actually have writing on the back that says dev. Let's do that. I'm not too sure whether me changing that will sign me off and sign me back on. So just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna sign off. I don't want my session being hung out there. If you go up to communication uh, and configure, I think this is where it lives. Um, this is where I define exactly what's going on with this session. Oh, so for example, look, I'd accidentally left this at 2480. No one likes 2480 screens. I'm going to go to 27132, of course. If you, as you go down the options here that define exactly how we're connecting to our machine, obviously we have all of our SSL uh, security connection details, if that's what you need. You can associate your local printer and assign it to a system printer, so when you run reports, it just pops off on your desk said the actress to the bishop. Um, the screen itself, we can talk about how the cursor style works or we can watermark it. So let's configure the watermark. I'm quite simply gonna say yes, show the watermark. I could put an image on there like the company logo. But in this case, I'm just gonna call this, uh, excuse me, uh, dev, dev, that'll do. Really boring. I'm gonna choose a stupid font because it just irritates me and I'll choose a color like orange. You can see here that what it's doing in the background is putting dev, 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 dev in the background, right? So I can increase opacity. I can make it really, really strong so it shows up super strong. Or my preferred one is to have it really faint so I can see it, but it doesn't interrupt with what I'm looking at. Uh, that will do me. What else have we got here? We can change the font. Remember what I was saying about the font scaling? and anti-aliasing, you can do that so it stretches the different fonts. Play with all these settings, you won't break anything. Um, you can change the print screen setup. Then you have all of your um, different options. So auto resize will stretch to fit things. Um, you can borders, graphicals. I'm not gonna go through all these options because they're pretty obvious and you can just sit and play with them. Now, one of the things we are gonna look at is the scratch pad and the screen history. I'll leave those turned off because I'll turn them on manually when we're using it and you'll see it, it's pretty neat. Um, you can assign macros to run when you sign on. If you wanted to call something, you didn't want to have a sign-on program. It's pretty comprehensive, right, for a free one. it's uh, It seems to offer more than most of the commercial 5250 products and way more than all of the freeware ones. And it's free. Go and get it. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to say OK. Oh, good. So it's telling me, right, you said OK. You've changed the profile. This is going to disconnect you and reconnect you. And I say yes. Now, what I expect to see is a reconnected session saying dev in the background, exactly what it shows, then everything else operates the same. Let me maximize this. Oops. Oh, that's interesting. So when I maximize now, it's pulling it to that window size because it's because I clicked on that always fit to screen. 
that's what it's doing. So let me go and change that because I don't like that at all. Uh, what did I say? I've got auto connect and reconnect. Was it in the automatic resize? I'm going to say no. So again, if this will now disconnect and reconnect me. And now it's not resizing to the best size that I've selected. I, I want to have a full screen with a black border. And you can see that it says dev quite nicely. Right. Uh, let me sign on. And there you have it. So if you don't want to change background screen colors, you can just click on watermark and it says what machine you're looking at. It's not too much of a distraction. I've got mine set to 10%. You could set set the opacity set to 10%. You could set that opacity of 5% so it's really faint. Or use colors, it's up to you. Um, right, one of the other nice things I was talking about is if we click on view and we show screen history, what it records down here is every single screen that you go to. So quite often, um, someone might ask you, um, I'll be asked, hey Nick, how do I sign into XYZ application and uh, send an email? And what I will do is I'll normally go in and say, right, take this command from this menu, take option three, then take option five, then press this, press this function key, and then so-and-so happens. And I'll painstakingly grab screenshots all along the way, right? Um, with this, you don't want to. So we would say, you know, do a work spluff. Um, then you could look at one of these spool files. Then you could um, go to the bottom. And you see what it's done down here? It's caught all three of these screenshots. It's cool, huh? And right away from displaying these screenshots, we can then export them and attach the screenshots to any emails. You could simply do a screen grab, cut and paste, which is how I tend to do it. You can drag the size of these so you can see them however you like. It's a neat little auditing function when you're doing things. I really like it. So let me turn screen history off. When I turn it off, it says it'll clear it and it'll start all over again. Great, huh? One of the other options, which I, which I don't really use very much, but I can see is going to be useful for a lot of people, is the uh, scratch pad. Now, how do I do that? That's right. So if you are looking at a screen, I sometimes do it if I'm doing something like a display library list. Okay, in this example, we've got no libraries. And when I've got a massive library list with a ton of libraries in there, I might want to grab some of those and I'll quite often copy and paste it and paste it over to a notepad on the side. But all I can do in here is I can say send to scratch pad. Literally what it does, it just it's just a huge free format area over on the right hand side of the screen where it's taken all the text off the screen and whacked it into a space for me to copy paste and maybe remember later. You know, I could then go in and say I want to look at a system or work with system values, right? Let's see, I'm looking at uh, additional number of total jobs. And for some reason, I need to remember that it's 30. I haven't got to write down 30. I can just say send to scratch pad. Straight away, as I'm looking at all of this stuff on my scratch pad, all of these screens are just stored in here. And it's really easy to go in and copy and paste them. Another neat little function that I kind of like. Um, what else can we do? Oh, we can change the themes of the scratch pad. I didn't even know that you could uh, do that. Again, it's useful. Um, what else do we have? So within the emulator itself, you can see that it works really nicely. We can turn hotspots in on, um, uh, if I can remember how to do it. Let's look. It is, if I remember correctly, under Edit Preferences. Yes, hotspots. Okay, so I can display URLs as hotspots whenever we see a URL in the, the text on the screen. I can say activate hotspots for anything that's a function key um, or an F01 or an F02, depending on what your naming standards are. I want to see them as a 3D buttons. Oh, the excitement. I didn't need to sign off there. I'm just into a habit of doing it. You can see straight away that whatever I'm doing now the commands are always highlighted as 3D buttons. I don't really like that. Let's turn the 3D buttons off. So the hotspots are still there. If I wanted to do an F9, um, an F12, 
12 to cancel I can still click on the hotspot but they're active they're just not highlighted as a box there's all kinds of other preferences is there anything else that I want to change in here I can change my fonts my tabs oh tabs so here I am signed into my machine tabs is the main thing I want to tell you about I really like this so I can just say here and say new tab so ignoring my scratch pad over at the side view let's turn the scratch pad off look I have two machines here's my original one view I'm gonna turn that one scratch pad off so I have multiple tabs for my different sessions the nice thing is if I go back to my original IBM I client access if I had multiple machines defined as I launch each one they launch in a new tab so I could have all different tabs and again using this watermark feature I could have the names of the systems behind it hey it's just really nice it just works once we have the configuration set up how we like with the right font the right scaling the right colors the right whatever it is about how you like to use the machine you can then just save it and save it as multiple sessions if you like so that next time you click on your icon and boom it starts up and it logs into you into all those different tabs depending on your communication if you've clicked default login it will connect and log you in and put you straight to the command line so um, yeah all in all IBM IACS absolutely the best uh, 5250 emulator out there in the on the market right now and it's free to download from IBM so uh, it's free it doesn't need installing you stuff it on your desktop or wherever run that Java file and boom it works um, that's it <laughs> I'm going to go and have a look at the uh, IFS functions now before I waffle too much because it's 15 minutes. How did I waffle that long? Good God, man. Um, I'm going to make a cup of coffee to calm me down, strangely. Oh, shut up, Nicholas. Right, okay. I hope that helped someone out there. Uh, go and download it. It's Ace.